not just for accumulating some material result. Like business people, or people who have jobs, they go through austerity. What is their austerity? They get up and go on the freeway and get caught in a traffic jam. That's an austerity. Why do they do this? To maintain family life. That's all. They go through so many austerities. But what is the result? Simply a little bit of pleasure in family life. It's impossible to avoid austerity. The main thing is to choose those austerities, to select those austerities which will benefit one spiritually. And for this reason, Srila Prabhupada has translated the Vedic literatures so we can understand what is spiritual austerity. Just like it is the austerity of the tongue to chant the holy names of the Lord. The austerity of the tongue to take Krishna prasada. Of course, not too much prasada. Otherwise, too much prasada means too much sleeping. Now today is a codice. So, we can practice austerity. No grains, no beans. Still, we take the side. Why do we take the side on the codice? Because we have so much service to do. Somebody may have to spend the fast entirely. But Srila Prabhupada did not insist on this. He was more insistent that we do service to Krishna. Therefore, we may take prasana today, the Kadasi prasana, and we go out and we preach. The greatest austerity is to take responsibility to deliver, to help to deliver the conditioned souls. That's the best austerity. The same here. Now. It is the very best austerity. If, uh, if you feel compassion, even if you don't feel compassion, but if you go out, on the order of your guru uh, and distribute Krishna consciousness, this is considered maximum compassion. It is good to be compassionate, and the maximum degree of compassion is when you go out and you give Krishna consciousness to people. So, and to do so, you have to undergo austerity. It is an austerity. It's austerity just like our at the same time what is living in man, and that's austerity. And they sometimes complain that it's too difficult, sometimes they just can't power. They have to live in such close quarters. Who would live like this moment? You can see normally when people make a motorhome, if they recondition a van, they make so much room in the van, right, for living, etc. And what do we do? Almost the entire area of the van is saved for putting books in. That means we are sacrificing our own comforts for the sake of preaching. And don't you think that Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda Prabhu will reciprocate how much pleased they become when they see the sacred time of God is willing to undergo such difficulties to assist them. Because it's only for this purpose that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu <laughs> This is why only for this reason Krishna comes. Otherwise, they're situated in the spiritual sky. Krishna, Lord Chaitanya, are existing in the spiritual world because they have their spiritual abode there. Then why do they come in this world? Only for our sake. Only to show an example of what they're doing in the spiritual world. And our preaching is to tell people about what is going on in the spiritual world. They come here to preach in this world. So anyone who takes up the mission of Krishna consciousness by assisting the preaching is performing the maximum degree of austerity. We have to be very sober and realize how much time is being wasted. In the purport Shri Prabhupada has mentioned, 50% of your life is wasted in sleep. Now, if you say that's not true, I don't sleep 12 hours a day, but you don't live 100 years either. Probably you may live 65, 70 years. 
So 65, 70 years, if you live and you sleep, say, seven hours, eight hours, compared to 100 years, it comes to nearly 50% of your life. 50% of the life comes to nearly 50% of your life. What did Prabhupada say about sleeping? It is like death. Sleeping is like death. He said, I don't like it at all. At the final year, when Prabhupada was getting ready to leave this material world, he said, for so long I was praying to overcome eating and sleeping, and now finally, by the grace of Krishna, this is happening. For 50 years, or half of one's life, is spoiled with sleep. Then the calculation is given. 20 years in childhood and boyhood or girlhood. Why is it wasted? You consider this. You go to school. What do you learn in school? Have you learned anything about Krishna? Have you learned anything about the soul in all those years in school? How much time you spoiled in thinking about boyfriends, girlfriends? So much time is spoiled in that level. How much time is spent in frivolous sports or playing with toys? It's like, you know, you can see these big toy stores, toys are us. All over the world, it's a huge chain. And what is the purpose of it? How to distract the children from the real purpose of human life by making them simply think endlessly of, you know, one game after another, one toy after another. So certainly 20 years of spoil in childhood for you. Then 20 years in invalidity. What does that mean? Old age. Invalidity means old age. So uh, who will not become infant invalid? And what, you know, we use this word invalidity, it has invalid. It's like when you have a, let's say, a license or a credit card and the time runs out, right, it is invalidated. It is of no use any longer. So old age is usually like this. People become so old, their bodies become so useless, they can't be engaged in any way. Sometimes they think, that is the time I will join Christian consciousness, when I become old. But Prabhupada said that is like, you know, Govinda Naman. When you have in India, they have the grains, the wheat, and they, when they harvest the wheat, separate the chaff, they have a system of throwing it up again. First of all, they put it on the road. Now they put it on the road because they're in the automobiles. So instead of putting it through a pressure, they put it on the road and all the automobiles drive over the grain. You may not believe this, but this is what happens in India. This is why it's very dangerous to drive in India. Because you see so many farmers put their grains on the right on the road, right on the highway. And you may say, that's crazy. Why would anybody put grains in the house? Because the cars come and crush the grains. Is it true or not? And then after a day or two of crushing the grains, the farmer picks up the grains and he throws the grains up in the air. And the wind will blow away the chaff, the outer, you know, external useless portion of the grain. And the rest of the grain falls down and then it's useful for grinding and making it to flour. Right, right? John says this. This is a system in India. So sometimes when the wind blows, not only the chaff is blown away, but some of the grains also are blown away. So sometimes when that happens, the farmer says, Go in the demand. I'm offering these grains to go in the <laughs> But actually, what type of offering is that? He didn't offer it willingly. But it, the grains automatically blew away, and then he thought as an off gesture, all right, now you go in and you can have this. So Prabhupada said, this is like one example of an old person, 
know, or someone who's in a school has no more any use, cannot use it, just like the farmer can't get those grains anymore, then he's a okay, Christian, you can have it. So a person tries so hard to enjoy throughout the life, and then at the final end, there's no more value to the body, and they can depravity and no more, they say, okay, now, Krishna is ready to surrender to the But we should not let this happen. And even then, most people don't do that. We see old people staying at home and playing with the grandchildren. Isn't it? They become the babysitters. It's a very common thing. Instead of becoming vanaprasa, they become babysitters. Does, is vanaprasa like babysitting? No. One has to leave home. Because home is the place of attachment. And attachment is the cause of repeated birth and death. Therefore, it is said unto Kalecha Mameva, Smanan Bhakta Kaleva. At the end of life, certainly one has to remember the Lord. Yap Kayati Saman Papa Yati Nasti Hatha Then there will be no more birth again in this material world. But if you stay at home, what do you remember? All the things which you're attached to. Therefore, we see the example of old people dying and surrounded by their family members. And everybody's crying, and they're crying. What is their next birth? Again, in that same house. But the prophet says, as a cockroach, or as a mouse. They're so attached to their house. They die surrounded by their family. They're so attached to their family, so they have to take birth again in that same place. But because they live their life in a very abominable way, they don't get a human birth. They take birth in the same house, with the same family members, but this time they take birth as a cockroach or a mouse. One time I did a program with Fiji, in Suva, in this place, Bindi You know that place? Anyway, there's Mr. Bindi, who was the host for us. I gave this lecture and I was talking about taking birth as a mouse because people were too much attached. And he was very, very attached to this building. You know, that he was letting us stay. He said, yes, yes, that is me. <laughs> he, he screamed, you know, he spoke out right in the middle of the lecture. He couldn't even control it. Yes, that is me. And then I said, and they will take birth as a mouse. He said, yes, yes. He was prepared. He said, any way to come back into this building, I don't know. <laughs> the people become so bewildered. And just like this word is given here. Mohina, by bewilderment. What is the bewilderment here? <clears throat> Increasingly attached to family life because of its insatiable, lusty desires. And therefore, we become so tired, we work so hard. And what are we working so hard for? What is it that we're working so hard for? Not many more of spreading Christian harm. This is the misfortune of family life. Actually, it is a misfortune. It is a great misfortune. Because as a brahmachari or a brahmachari, one has no other business except this sanatana dharma. Perhaps the dharma is not sanatana dharma. Brahmachari life is also not Sanatana Dharma. But what you can do within Brahmachari life is Sanatana Dharma. You can serve Guru Krishna 100%. This is the value of Brahmachari and Brahmachari. Therefore, we're always urging, as long as you can remain Brahmachari and Brahmachari, you can do it. Now, Prabhupada also was very kind to have the Grihastas. Therefore, what did he tell the Grihastas as soon as they got married? As soon as a brahmachari, brahmachari got married, what did Prabhupada tell the new greenhouse to talk? Yes. It's on the license. What else would he say practically for them to do? Yes, go and open a new temple. As soon as a couple used to get married, Prabhupada immediately sent them out to open a new temple. Why? So they wouldn't get involved in having drugs. That's what. Because he knew that by opening a new temple, then they have to preach. Somehow or other, they're going to have to preach and maintain themselves. And by maintaining their temple, they'll also get a place to live. 
and expected them to live separately. But just to see the austerity that Srila Prabhupada expected from all the members of the Krishna consciousness movement, not just the brahmacharis, the vanaprastas, and the sannyasis. This is how Prabhupada started this movement. He, he did not allow anyone to have sense gratification. Even if someone wanted to get married, then he said to the dressmaker, he said, This rehearsal life is not a license for sense gratification. Go and open the temple. Now, how do you think Prabhupada opened 108 temples? How do you think Prabhupada opened 108 temples in such a short time? As soon as someone got married, he said, Okay, go open the temple. Then he would say, household of life is for responsible living. And the responsibility is you have to deliver the conditioned soul. That's your responsibility. Not just maintaining wife and children. Because he said every single Rihamedi is doing that. You cannot say that that is the responsibility of a household. A householder's responsibility is to give shelter to all the conditioned souls. Therefore, before a householder eats, He's supposed to go outside the door and say, Prasada, Prasada, Prasada. Of course, here in America, we do that with little finger prayers. <laughs> they want to do this every evening. Go out and say some funny words called Prasada, Prasada, Prasada. But if you go to the temple, then it's your business to invite people for Prasada. Now, very few households are doing this anymore. Very few. Some are doing it, not many children. Some are doing it. And others are being very responsible, just like Shamsud and White and others here. They're also taking responsibility, no free time, always preaching Christian consciousness. Somehow or other, if you do not perform austerities, then you're not even being. You should understand that human life is distinguished from animal life. In what way? In that in the human form of life you get the chance to serve Krishna. Just maintaining family is not service to Krishna. It is what every animal does. Prabhupada encouraged people, why don't you try to maintain by preaching? If you think it's not possible, then it means you have no faith. It is possible. But you may have to do it more simply. Now, if you remain Brahmacharya, Brahmacharya for some time and practice this austerity, then if you have to enter into household life, you may remain sober and think, why should I give up? The, just like John, she got to take it. Right? For preaching. So she thought, even when I enter the house of life, I'm not going to get entangled in the normal house. Right? And she, so she said to all the preaching center. She did with Muhammad and the prophet said she did. And she's not unhappy. Instead of, you know, she's getting her children by getting new bhaktis, new bhaktis, without all the problems of changing diapers. <laughs> Although there are just as many problems to deal with it. the minds of the new bhaktis and the bhaktis can be as troublesome as dealing with the new baby, even more so. This is a sacrifice which Krishna will certainly reward. And if one can remain a brahmachari throughout his life, so much the better. When Prabhupada had the Radhanamara party came to visit Prabhupada in Atlanta, for all brahmacharis and sannyasis, Prabhupada said, save yourself so much trouble. He didn't encourage them to give them to save yourself so much trouble. He said, why should I encourage you? Because some of you will do it anyway. I'm not encouraging you. Rather, I will encourage you to remain. Just like Prabhupada said, I don't have to encourage anyone to do business because you're already trained to do business. From the very childhood, what do we play Monopoly? At least we used to play that Monopoly game. We're always trying to defeat the public. 
get the car to place the phone door, put the hotel stay, and charge two hundred dollars. We get trained to be vicious. Where was the training for Brahminical life? Completely absent. So therefore, Prabhupada gave more emphasis to train Brahmins. Because he said you've already been trained to do everything else except to know Krishna and to teach people about Krishna. But well, we should understand that what is the uh, value of human life and how to use it. Eating, sleeping, sex life, and fear are the four bodily necessities, but to utilize the full duration of the life of a person desiring to advance in spiritual consciousness must reduce these activities by force. You can't do it by feeling, do it by force. Feeling will come later. Don't expect that feelingly I will reduce eating, sleeping, mating, and defending when I'm attracted to Krishna. No. You have to practice now. Just like those who are interested in spiritual advancement, they try to control their eating. They regulate their sleeping. They regulate they, they regulate the thing. And therefore they become more advanced in spiritual life. So these verses from Prabhupada Maharaj are very, very valuable. It's Krishna consciousness process, chanting Hare Krishna, reading our books, taking prasada, associating with devotees, this will give us a higher taste. Then the lower things will go away. Raghunath Swami is the perfect example of renunciation. And he has offered a nice prayer. Vairagya, you bhakti in a sun, Vairagya, a payama mama, a bitch, a he offers this prayer to his guru, Sanatana Goswami. He says, Sanatana Goswami was very kind to me. He, will, he forcefully made me drink the bitter medicine of renunciation, although I had no taste for it. So sometimes our guru will forcefully make us taste this renunciation. Raghunath Das Goswami said he was very kind, Kripambhuni, very kind to me. He forced me to accept the mercy of austerity of renunciation. We should place ourselves at the disposal of our spiritual master and will allow him to manipulate us as a puppet is manipulated with strings. Now we pray to our spiritual master, please accept me just like a puppet, as a tool in your hands, and make me dance as you would make what you want. Just like Srila Prabhupada offered that prayer on board the ship, Jaladukta, he said, make me dance, make me dance, make me dance. You are brought me here for a purpose known best to you. Now please fulfill this name that you have given me. And make me dance, Bhakti make me dance, make me dance, make me dance. So we'll stop here. Anyone have any questions? Uh, just now this point that you say that the uh, spiritual master forcefully will make you an act. So how how would you do that? How does the spiritual master forcefully make one renounce? By engaging you in the preaching activities. So he has a disciple to go also. Huh? The disciple has to the disciple has to be willing to be engaged. Just like the spiritual minister may encourage, please go and sing. The disciple doesn't agree, how to move force. 
You can lead a horse to water. You can't force him to drink the water. Ultimately, it's voluntary. When we say the Guru forces, force means it's up to the disciple ultimately to choose whether to serve Krishna or Maya. Sankirtan is such a good activity. It has the greatest of all tastes to it. But in the beginning, it is bitter. But in the end, it becomes very sweet. Anyone who knows the pleasure of standing and meeting people who were, all, who would, were otherwise completely in illusion, and they hand them books, and they go away taking a transcendental literature, knows what a satisfying feeling this is. And you get to do it not once, and same time you get to do it 20 times, 30 times, 40, 50 times. Can you imagine how those devotees in Europe feel when you know they give an arm of books to someone and they see a person going away and the books so high they can't keep them between their chin? They hold on books like this. So much satisfaction. <coughs> So it's bitter in the beginning, it's sweet in the end. That is spiritual. Actually, most people are quite passionate. If you're passionate, then I cannot see why you cannot maintain by saying But it's more difficult because it requires very, very focused consciousness. You have to go. You can't do this job like you can do an ordinary job. If you don't go to bed early, if you don't get up early, if you don't chant very good grounds, if you don't regulate how much you eat, if you don't hear the philosophy, you can't do the same time. It's impossible. You, you won't have the determination to do it, you won't have the potency to do it, and Krishna will not empower you to do it. Therefore, it's better to just get it. It's easier to just get a job. Just like that song, you know, get a job. That's in the 60s, there was a song in the job. Have you ever heard that song? I don't know. It's not a famous singer. It's a very popular And that's the song they used to sing to us, get a job. You go out of high now, the book distribution, it was a get a job. They had the best job. Why should we get another job? What benefit do we get from such a job? I work hard 40 hours a week, you give me a paid check, I give the money for paying rent or mortgage payment, I pay my food bills, I buy some furniture, some clothing, that's it. That's what I'm working for. Get a job. What's the difference between that and a little bird that flies around all day looking for straw to build a nest? That bird, we say, the bird has a bird brain. And that's the use of a grain of size of a bird, right? <laughs> to build a nest. And that's how much, that's the capacity of grain size we need to do that work. Therefore, we see these people are called muhas. What is a muha? A foolish ass, a beast of burden, who simply works hard to build a nest, to furnish the nest, to feed the young. How is that? a result of transcendental dream. Life's, life's time should be saved for being Krishna conscious. Another question. Let's end here. And the same time party for both. I hope that the same time sports will go up more and more today. We know that simply by going out more hours, the results will increase. It is quite a factor. Thank you, Tanya Vinaki. Sila Prabhupada, more Bhakta Vinaki. More famous. Sila Gurudev, Ki.